multiple WWE stars making a SmackDown debut. We'll talk about it. Plus, changes to Raw's presentation coming as soon as Monday. And we have an update on Andrade's AEW status. It's all in the wrestling news right now. A lot of conversation today about a very talented second generation Mexican wrestler who could be bound for WWE main roster. That's right, Santos Escobar. Yes. Uh, what's the story here, Andrew Alidolo? So for those who have asked where Legado del Fantasma have been since they departed NXT, PWInsider.com is told the current plan is for the group to debut for the SmackDown brand. Now, they're also told that Santos Escobar, Joaquin Wilde, Electra Lopez, Raul Mendoza, or Cruz del Toro, as he's now known, may appear as soon as tomorrow's SmackDown season premiere for Worcester, Bush, 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 Worcester, Massachusetts. My God, why is that so hard to say? Worcester, as, Cheshire. As a Worcester UK boy, I'm deeply offended by your butchering I'm, of I'm my, so of the American version of my home city. I'm very sorry, but there were pictures for them recently and some that PW Insider have spoken to believe the group will start this week as well. So that is very exciting for the group. They were one of the highlights, I think, of NXT. And yeah, we haven't seen them since, I think, about August. And uh, they got in a car with Santos. They they went, hey, lads, get in here. <laughs> Off we go. And we didn't get the uh, Legado del Fantasma road trip movie that I was hoping. For this summer, there's a but... gap there. There's a gap there. We could definitely fill what they've been doing between August and now oh, I'd love with that. something nice. How about a claymation animated series about what Legado del Fantasma did on their wacky adventures on the way to SmackDown? You are teasing me, Tom, oh. with a good time. <laughs> with a very good time. Uh, how do you see Legado del Fantasma fitting in on the blue brand? I think they're fitting perfectly now. We've got lots of tag teams, and I think Triple H is putting a bit more more of an emphasis on tag team wrestling as well, which uh, which is good to see, because we have so many good tag teams on the main roster now too, and to flesh out the, that division a little bit more is uh, not only a good thing for us as fans, it's also good for the likes of the Usos as well, so we can get a few more nice uh, matches out of some other teams, because we've seen, obviously, the Profits and whatnot go against them multiple times. It'd be nice to see something like Legado del Fantasma get into that as well. We got Hit Row there, so there could be a little bit of a little bit of back and forth between them two teams mm. as well. There's a, there's a lot of possibilities, I think. What about yourself? Well, I just, as you say, a lot of love for tag team wrestling coming from Triple H's terraforming of Titan Towers, mm. which I'm really happy to see. I see Santos Escobar certainly as somebody to get in the mix of the Intercontinental title division. Yeah. Love the idea of a Santos and Gunter match. Oh my God. God, that'd be good. That is that would be very, it. very good. Yeah, I think Santos is, I mean, down the line, maybe Santos as a universal title contender. Mm. Maybe not immediately, maybe not straight away, but certainly at some point. I think so. I think we do, and, and that's the thing, I think, with a lot of sort of uh, NXT up and comers, I think there's a lot of potential mm. for them to finally reach that. And, you know, I guess that is the idea for them to finally get to that end goal for a lot of them too. Um, I, can, I imagine Triple H hired them for a reason as yeah. well, you know? And <laughs> Let the sees, reason be yeah, love. And he, and, he, and he sees that kind of uh, future for them as well. So um, we will we'll see. To break down the other members as well, uh, Del Toro and Wilds as a tag team, they did some beautiful stuff on NXT. Mm -hmm. So I love the idea of them in the tag division. I think Electra Lopez uh, is uh, an intriguing number for the SmackDown women's division as mm. well. Quite an imposing persona. Yeah, definitely. That I think could uh, add, I mean, she's and she's a bit of a heavy hitter as well compared to some of the women on the roster. So that's gonna be mm. an interesting addition to have one of those sort of bruiser types in the women's division. Yeah. Like, I like that, add another one, that'd be really cool. Uh, that's all part of the season premiere of SmackDown from Worcester, Massachusetts. Season premiere being a big deal for American TV shows, especially. This is kind of where you're kind of hard selling the program once again. It's yeah. a bit of a, a, a reboot for the show. And the same thing is happening on Monday Night Raw. Uh, WrestleVotes reporting today that a commentary change, as well as a few minor aspects of Raw and SmackDown are expected, with uh, the first being on Raw as of Monday. Now, a commentary change. I'm intrigued as to what this 
will mean. I think that um, the current team, Jimmy Smith, Cody, uh, Corey Graves, Byron Saxon have been doing some great work. I know Byron is currently on NXT. Mm. Maybe, just speculating forever, friend. Maybe this could be maybe a permanent move for Byron to NXT to bring somebody else across. Yeah, perhaps. Maybe perhaps. making it a two-person booth. Oh, I kind of like the three person, the the rapport that three people have though. You know, like two people is good, but I always like just the extra person in there to throw but something else. Two's else company in. and three's a crowd. Well, yeah, I like it on AEW. Like Excalibur, Taz and, uh, and Tony. Yeah, that, Them that, three together are dead good. Three has kind of become the sweet spot. I think when you get the right three, I think yeah. Exc Excalibur and Tony and Taz as a triumvirate on AEW, I think are really solid. Yes, a chef. So yes. if you could get that within WWE, that kind, that kind of, of rapport, that kind of chemistry, that would be good. But that's again whether or not they keep stick with the three. They mean, yeah, you know, we've had a two man booth on SmackDown for the longest of times. Mm -hmm. And when it's the right two people, then it's it's a strong it's a strong proposition when Pat it's the Michael, right two yeah. people. Um, and obviously minor treat minor tweaks to come. Uh, I think we speculated on this a little bit last week on the news where it might be a case that they want to make Raw and SmackDown feel a bit more individual. Yeah, which I, which I think is a good thing mm. as well. You know, give them their own identities, uh, which makes things just th things feel a little bit different and a little bit uh, more of a reason to tune in as well, isn't it? Rather than being like, well, I saw kind of similar things happening on Monday or Friday or whatever. I don't maybe don't really need to tune into this one. Obviously, they've got their own separate rosters, but if you mix things up a little bit more, it's more it's more compelling to go over and, uh, and see what's happening. Smackdown fist. Please. Please. Trips. Please. You've got it in storage. Please. Put in a phone call to uh, to the storage company. <laughs> oh, because the, the, we've, got the, we've got the key for that Smackdown fist on floor five. He oh. says that all the time. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Triple H. That'll be on your flipping gravestone, that'll be. <laughs> Got the keys to the SmackDown fist. Uh, what else is happening on the Raw season at premiere? Let's tell people. We've got the Bloodline. They're going to be there. They're going to speak as well. <laughs> there <laughs> you go. For them. They're going to speak. Well With their done. mouths. Hello. Um, D Generation X are obviously celebrating their 25th anniversary. All the posters so far feature Triple H, Shawn Michaels, X Pac, and Raw Dog. And are we going to get some daddy ass chance? I was going to ask you whether or not we will get daddy ass. I'm fairly confident that we'll get some daddy ass. Me chance. too. But I think, as reported before, Triple H left some up his sleeve to uh, to, to, oh, to come back out. with that. Yeah, you know. Expect to learn a little behind the curtain lines. I wouldn't be shocked if on Tuesday we're leading a news video with Triple H takes shot at AEW. Yep. Uh, because Triple H is going to get on the mic and go, uh, lol. There you go. <laughs> That's exactly what you'll say. We've also got United States Championship match. It's Bobby Lashley defending his title against Seth Rollins. Will he come out of the fight pit unscathed? Who knows? Mr. Money in the Bank, Austin Theory, is also scheduled to go up against Johnny Gargano. And uh, that's, yeah, that's it. I love so the far. idea to go back to it. So Seth, uh, I, I, li little uh, spoiler for predictions, which is out on the YouTube channel a bit later on today. Um, I, I won't say which way I, which way I go for the prediction, but I do love the idea of Seth Rollins winning the fight pit and just being like the king of fight pit, the king yeah. of MMA. <laughs> he can do it all. He can do wrestling. He can do fashion. Yeah. He can do MMA now. I'm that the best, would be a nice I'm the best thing. MMA fighter. And then he faces Bobby Lashley, beats him for the US title. See, I'm the best MMA fighter. I like how <laughs> it almost sounds northern. I'm the best MMA fighter. <laughs> hey. hey, it's me. I'm the best MMA fighter. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fingers crossed for that. That's the season premiere of our hour. Uh, let's end also do some Andrade's camp then. So we, we talked about it in the video this morning. Andrade and Sammy Guevara getting into a little bit of a ding dong backstage at Dynamite TE. Wrestling Observer Radio give us an update on this. Now, there was some discussion on sort of the 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 the. the, the finer detail of the, the brawl backstage, yeah, the altercation backstage. Wrestling Observer Radio, as Dave Meltzer saying, Sammy did not throw any punches. Andrade punched him. Sammy did not fight back. It was broken up immediately, according to Dave's sources. He adds a few more meaty bits to the bone here, saying on Tuesday night, they were talked to. Both of them. They were told no fighting. And Andrade, you're not going to get fired if you fight, but you will be sent home. And Andrade said, don't worry. Nothing is going to happen. There will be no fighting. 
<laughs> and Sammy said the same thing, saying, nothing's going to happen. Anyway, uh, they had security there. Everybody was warned ahead of time. Uh, Dave Meltzer then goes on to say that Andrade was waiting for Sammy in the hallway and got about two punches in before the whole thing was broken up. Sammy did not punch anyone, and Andrade was sent home shortly after the fracas. Brian echoes this, uh, saying, Brian Alvarez, this is saying four out of five said that this is how it happened. It would have been six in the Tokyo Dome. Dave Meltzer emphasizes that 100% once more, Sammy did not throw the punches, and he attributes Andrade's motive to his wanting to be fired. So obviously this is what Dave Meltzer, Brian Alvarez, the Wrestling Observer sources have heard. Um, Sean Ross Sapp from Fightful, uh, who reposted a report earlier today, didn't say it like this, but it okay. certainly gave the vibe that there was one that was swinging and one that was dodging. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Essentially. And uh, it looks as if that <laughs> it goes against a little bit. Like the, my, like, we'll see how this pans out. Andrade always, you know, very tran tranquilo. Yeah. Tran tranquilo. Tranquilo. Um, so for him to come out punching Sammy is uh, an interesting one. I, you know, <laughs> try anything to get fire perhaps <laughs> yeah. I mean at this point there is the uh, we'll obviously you know pinch of salt with all of this yeah, of course. over the shoulder big bag of salt if needed uh, with them saying that that Dave Elder saying don't fight you two so Tony Khan saying to them don't fight you two yeah we won't dad <laughs> that's what it feels like yeah we won't dad and, and it kind of echoes that Andrade is keen to kind of get out of AEW a lot of things that we've seen on Twitter from him have given the impression that he's not a happy camper yeah and, uh, and, and maybe he went if I punch Sammy Guevara maybe. it's like a get out of jail free card even though it was said that, that he was told even if something does happen you'll be sent home but you won't be fired maybe he was just testing the waters maybe this becomes like a way of of sort of getting out of work <laughs> in AEW. Yeah. Like, you know, if I was working in, a, working in an admin role, going, ah, oh, I need to book a week's holiday, but I've run out of holiday. Just just take someone. Just go punch Sammy Guevara. <laughs> oh, Tony sent me home for 10 days. <laughs> Obviously, don't punch Sammy no, Guevara. No, please don't. Please don't punch Sammy Guevara. Please don't punch anybody. It's, it's, a, it's a silly old world. Um, we'll keep you up to date on that. That's the latest we've got on Andrade's status. Do we think he'll be back? Do you think... I mean, obviously, he, he won't be fired, but do you think he'll be back? I'm not sure at this point. I, I I really don't know. I don't want to say yes. I don't want to say no. I guess we'll just, again, see how this all pans out. And if he's maybe suspended for a little bit, see what happens when he comes back. Or what happens at the end of... I don't know. Tom, my mind's gone, Tom. My head's gone. My head's gone. Lots of things have been happening within AEW, and it's hard to sort of know where any of it is going to uh, to conclude. So, yeah. Okay, well, for a more wrestling-based conversation, the predictions video with for Extreme Rules with Adam Pachiti and myself is along later today on the Cultaholic YouTube channel. We'll have live reactions to WWE Extreme Rules over the weekend as well. And what happened at Extreme Rules as well? Anything you're working on? Uh, no, twitch.tv forward slash Cultaholic on a Monday, 6 p.m. BST. We'll be playing some spooky games. Who knows what? Maybe we'll continue Resident Evil 7. Or maybe we'll start something new if you'd like to. But whatever it is, it will be scary. BST, best spooky times. He's got it. That's exactly what I was going to say as well. Best spooky He's times. Got it. And of course, the latest wrestling news you will find at cultaholic.com. Kiss, kiss. I love you, bye.